up, you guys? This is Rob from A Gay Guy Plays, and today we're gonna do something a little bit different. We're gonna have patch notes in a flash. Okay, so what a lot of people don't know is that occasionally, and just keep in mind, this does not happen with every single patch. Usually it happens with the bigger patches, but D will actually pull together the patch notes and send them out to the partners a little bit early. So I figured that while you're playing the game, you could have me running in the background reading you the patch notes. So I don't know if you guys like this format, but I think it'll be really, really easy, and I'll give you guys kind of like the summed up version of things rather than the kind of overcomplicated like wall of text that I am currently looking at right now. All right, so Future Rob jumping in real quick to give you guys a heads up that the patch notes version that they gave us did miss out on a few things, kind of like the new Wukong helmet, the new Kavat kind of hoodie thing, which is super, super cute, and the new Captura mode, which is the cam mode, but we had discussed that previously, and also the weapons as well, but we had pre uh, discussed that in a previous video too. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and link that in the description box below just in case you guys wanna jump into those in any detail, but this chunk has some pretty good information on it, so definitely check it out. Um, so I guess sit back, relax, and enjoy! Alright, so first things first, we've got Octavia. You can either pick her up in the market via Platinum, or you can get her blueprint by completing the Cephalon Suda quest. You can find her parts in Rotation B of the Orokin Derelict Survival, or in the Lua Caches on Lua Exterminate missions. There's also a third part that Future Rob will be popping in to tell you about, um, because it says right here that it is in the official update notes. So, Future Rob? You can also get a guaranteed Octavia blueprint print piece by completing the organ note match puzzle on Lua. It's not the seven principal one, just keep that in mind and note that you will not find it in mobile defense maps. Alright, so one thing that we didn't get to chat about was Octavia's passive. She briefly replenishes energy for Octavia and nearby allies when abilities are activated. Moving on to her first ability, Mallet is tied to the percussion part of her anthem. Remember that, that's going to be important. This rhythmically beats damage into nearby enemies and draws their fire. Damage inflicted on the Mallet increases its lethality. Next up is her second ability, Resonator, which is tied to the bass or bass part of her anthem. I really don't know which one of those is appropriate. This one launches a rollerball that charms foes to follow it, combines with the mallet to create a roving ball of musical devastation. Next up is her third ability, Metronome, which is tied to the melody part of her anthem. This one grants a buff to those who consistently perform actions in time to Octavia's music. Time jumps offer the Vivis speed buff, Crouching on Beat grants cloaking with the Nocturne buff, Firing rhythmically bestows Opera a multi-shot buff, timed melee swings gives the Forte damage buff, and her final ability is Amp, which draws power from the decibel level of sound in the area and uses it to amplify a damage buff for Octavia and her allies. It also doubles the damage and range of nearby mallets. So as you guys heard, I was putting stress on the percussion, bass, and melody, and that is because you get to compose your own songs using the Mandichord, which you can find in the Appearance tab, kind of like where you have Flappy Zephyr and um, the, what is the other one? The other zappy, zappy thing. Not flappy, but zappy. <laughs> Alright, so this next part I've condensed by a lot, and that's mainly because I don't understand a lot of musical lingo, and I'm assuming that a majority of you guys do not understand it as well, so I'm giving you the bare bones. So the compositions are set to 120 beats per minute. There are three tracks, melody, bass, and percussion. Compositions are comprised of four bars, and you can rotate through each bar by clicking and holding the rotating wheel at the center or by scrolling with your mouse wheel. All right, now moving on to instrument packs. The Adele instruments are the Manticore's default instruments, but there are four instruments available for purchase in the market for platinum. Alpha instruments, beta instruments, drug instruments, gamma instruments. If you do not have a custom song saved on your Mandicord, the Adal instrument song will play in the arsenal and can be used in mission by default. Now, if you're feeling adventurous, you can select different instruments for each track to create unique compositions. There's also a volume mixer where you can adjust the volume of each track, track isolation where you can toggle each track on and off, and a loop where you can kind of like copy and paste certain kind of rhythms and melodies that you want repeated over and over. Now when it comes to composition, you can save your composition, you have a total of 5 composition slots. Um, you can reload, which will revert any new changes back to the original saved composition, and you can load song, which is selecting one of your custom songs or the default songs from the instrument packs to load into the mandicord. And when it comes to sharing, you can share your compositions with other players by trading them in the dojo at Maru's Bazaar, or typing song in chat, which will bring up a list of your compositions to choose from, kind of like how we have for the ribbon system. Alright, so I want you guys to pay really close attention to this next one because the new clan rank system has arrived and there's a chance you could be getting some really good rewards but only in a time limited manner. Now as promised, DE is going to be giving us retroactive affinity for the first time you construct an oracle room, bio lab, chem lab, energy lab, tenno lab, Oroken lab, dueling room, and obstacle course. You'll also get it the first time you construct a trading post, treasury, and temple of honor as well as upon completion of plan research. 
God, I'm just really fucking up all my verbiage today. And for those of you guys who haven't completed these items, you can actually see how much each of these items will give you in the new clan menu. Now, here is the really interesting bit that you need to know. All existing clans are currently at the initial clan rank, regardless of their clan affinity. So think about this in kind of a way of your affinity, how much affinity you've gained, as opposed to your mastery rank. Alright? So once members complete the ascension ceremony, the clan will ascend to the highest clan rank attainable with their current amount of mastery. So it's basically like a mastery rank test, but it's all in one go. Um, now, what is this ascension ceremony? Basically, what this happens is, if you've earned enough to reach the next rank, a new decoration called the Ascension Device will become active. To participate in the ceremony, a clan member simply needs to interact with this device. Depending on your clan tier, a certain number of members must partake in the ceremony in order to reach the Ascension, but under no time limit. So, any number, as long as you reach the certain amount that they are giving you, which for Ghost, you only need one member to ascend. For Shadow, you only need five. Storm, you need 15. Mountain, you need 30. And Moon, you need 50 so it's very very easy very very attainable um, and you have no time limit as to when people will do that however here is that time limited catch that I was talking about participants will immediately be awarded endo upon interacting with the device and any remaining clan members will be able to interact with the device and receive endo reward within 72 hours after the ascension ceremony has completed participants from the clans who have enough clan affinity will ascend to multiple ranks will be rewarded endo from each individual rank so rank 1 is 1,000 endo all the way up to rank 9, which is 9,000 endo. So if you guys get the max level in one shot, basically you're going to get 45,000 endo all at once. That's insane. That's like more than enough to level up a primed mod. Now, to remove any confusion between these new clan ranks and the existing ones, clan hierarchy is now used to describe a player's position within the clan, whether they are a warlord or initiate. So clan rank is like your mastery rank, and then clan hierarchy is what position you hold within the clan. Very, very simple. Okay, so this next little bit is a tad boring, but I figured I would throw it in anyway because I thought it was interesting. Dojo sessions are now hosted using the relay system. You and 49 other Tenno will be able to visit the dojo at the same time before another instance is created. You can actually trade in the dojo now, which I think is really, really cool. And what pass rock means by trading, he means trading like Maru's Bazaar trading, not like trading at a kiosk, which you could already do in the dojo. So just for clarification, you can Maru's Bazaar trade in the dojos now, alright? Back to pass drop. Bloop. However, when two people duel, I guess it's still gonna be instant, so you can you'll be able to trade in the dueling rule, but not in a dueling session. I don't know who would want to trade in a dueling session, but apparently that's a thing that you should know. Now, in addition to Octavia, we also got the Limbo rework, which is absolutely insane. Let's start off with this passive. While in the Rift, Limbo receives a slight energy regeneration. Additionally, enemies killed in the Rift will grant Limbo 10 energy, which makes me think quick thinking and Zenerik might like keep him alive forever. That's kind of insane. Um, Rift Walk is his movement activated ability. Limbo darts in and out of different phases of existence at no energy cost. Tapping the row key will shift Limbo between the Rift and Material Plane. Shifting into the Rift leaves behind a tear that for a period of 5 seconds, Limbo and allies can use it to enter the Rift. Limbos that enter the Rift through the tear can remain in the Rift as long as they please, unlike allies who have temporary access. Now the next one is a little bit controversial, we'll see how you guys feel about this, but Banish sends enemies and allies within a small radius into or out of the Rift for a period of time. However, Keep this in mind, banished targets must be in the same plane as Limbo to be affected. So you can't banish something, then unbanish something, then banish something, then unbanish it, unless you're actually within the same plane every single time. So you're gonna have to like, rift walk continuously. For example, Limbo must be in the material plane to banish a material plane target to the rift and vice versa. Banished enemies will take damage when casted and will be knocked down for a brief period of time. And the next one is the one that everybody is going gaga for. I'm still, I'm still seeing if I'm going to be sold. But number two is stasis. Stop banished enemies in their tracks by putting them in stasis for a short period of time. Toggle the ability on and move within the rift to strategically set up shots around enemies affected by stasis. Projectiles will stay suspended until the stasis timer runs out or is toggled off or until the 300 projectile limit has been reached upon which your torrent of physics will be launched at the enemy. 
Now, notice, they didn't say anything about being a backlash of using too many things, so it looks like they got rid of that part in um, uh, quality assessment. So that's kind of interesting to hear. Now, at number three, which is the one that I'm super, super excited about, but we'll see how it actually plays out. I mean, we, we gotta be real with this, right? Um, void energy surges through limbo and into the rift, radially charging enemies within the rift. Charged enemies will killed within the rift will release a burst of void energy to nearby enemies in the material plane. Charged enemies that cross over into the material plane will take damage and create a mini cataclysm, which is one fourth the size and power of Limbo's cataclysm. Now, here is the interesting thing. Number four is I was like, I looked at this and I was like, holy shit, this is kind of a thing. But bridging the rift and material planes, Cataclysm creates a sphere of void energy that shifts enemies within its radius into the rift. During its creation and final collapse, enemies will stumble and take damage. So you've got a little CC in there, so it's not just one way or the other. You get a little bit of time. However, the sphere's final collapse deals damage to enemies in both in and out of the sphere, so both in and out, and scales based on the health and shields of all enemies within the rift. So I don't know what the multiplier is going to be like, but it scales, number one, off of health and shields. So I mean, you know, it goes up of everything in the rift. So I'm kind of excited to see how maybe even cataclysm spamming is going to work. Now, they do have some additional changes. Mission objective items such as data masses can now be carried in and out of the rift plane. However, be careful not to drop these items in the rift plane as they can only be picked up in the material plane. So you can hold these items in the rift plane, but you cannot actually pick them up from the rift plane. So I'm assuming if you're going to hack a panel or something like that, you're going to have to hack it outside of the rift plane, just the same thing as you would have to do is to pick up a data mass outside of the rift plane. But after that, you can zip back in and you have it safely in your hands. Next up, allies in Cataclysm Sphere can now collect pickups including mission objective items. And to repeat, because I did not think that Pass Rob got excited enough, but you can get pickups in Cataclysm now! You can get pickups in Cataclysm now! So everybody was asking for it, I just want to stress it, you have pickups in Cataclysm now! I hope you're hard, I hope you're very very hard. Anyway, back to Pass Rob. Bloop. That way, no trolling, you know, people feel feel a little bit better, less drama about that. Um, the Rift Torrent Augment will now grant Limbo a damage increase, which is 5, 10, tw 5, no, oh my god, 15, 20, 25, and 30% for every uh, enemy affected in Rift Surge, and they toned down the effects while in the Rift, so you guys should be very, very happy about that. It's gonna feel like, I'm, I'm hoping that the result is that all of the people who are paranoid and hate Limbos because they've had like one bad experience with them um, will no longer feel uber troll. Um, so that about does it for all of the information that I have right now. I'm sure that they might go ahead and add anything extra to the actual patch notes itself. And if there is anything of note, remember that I'm going to put it in the um, in a pinned comment down in the comment box below. So make sure to check out those pinned comments. Make sure to expand them. And that does it for now, hopefully, because, you know, this is past Rob. <laughs> recording this ahead of time. Hopefully I am enjoying the update as much as you guys are enjoying the update. Make sure if you guys are doing a lot of work with the um, new mute manda, manda cord <laughs> and you come up with something amazing, hit me up in game at operative underscore shift. Let me hear it and maybe I'll feature it in a video. I've only got five slots though so uh, you gotta be really really good to make it into my slot. <laughs> Anyway, I will chat with you guys again later. Um, yeah, keep in mind, I will be putting out uh, videos. I'll be putting out really quick in a flash videos of the update actually in action. And I'll have, you know, the reworks and I'll have all of the weapons and whatnot. So be sure to check back to the channel then. And as always, love somebody, hurt nobody, and touch yo mandacore. And then send me the tunes because I want to hear it. I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye